Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode 5 of our Force Science series. Today we take a look at how different battery sizes affect the power of many of the impacts we've tested so far, and especially today, two of our most powerful cordless impact wrenches in their class we've tested to date. Since our original episode 18 video on Milwaukee high output batteries where we saw less gains than we were expecting and theorized why that might be, we've seen some pretty big differences in power between battery design, cell size, and even sometimes simply the capacity written on the side. In our Octane episode, we saw an increase of up to 40% switching from an older generation to a newer top shelf battery on that same mid torque impact wrench. But that was going from a smaller 18650 format of lithium ion cell to a 21700 size in that three amp hour octane pack. But perhaps a more relevant and recent discovery was on our DeWalt episode where we saw a 12% loss in power from the high torque using a four amp hour XR battery versus a five amp hour battery with also that same XR format from DeWalt. With our viewers having plenty of worthy theories as to why, including the effective C rating of the different battery cells, perhaps limiting discharge rate, and the voltage of each cell staying more consistent without drop off over time on a higher overall capacity 5 amp hour pack compared to the 4. With those losses recorded and in the books, today we take a look at Makita's batteries to try to put a bow on this story our dyno is trying to tell us by putting different sizes and capacities on both the Makita High Torque and the brand new Mid Torque from Makita to see if there's something to be said about picking up a pack with a larger number on the side in order to get more beans out of your gun. Normally we try to stay apples to apples with 18650 cell size packs up against other 18650 cell packs because that's what brands try to sell you in the kits with those advertised torque figures on the box that we're usually testing against. Luckily for us, and literally only us in this case, Makita is kind of like Kodak in the late 90s. They've heard of some new fancy innovations, but they're pretty set in their ways and if anything, plan to double down. Speaking of doubling down, with Makita's new XGT line of tools, they're doing just that. Keeping these same 18650 cells, heck even the same number of them in a case and just changing up how many are in parallel versus in a series and upping that voltage to 40 volts, thus cutting the amp hours in half, down to two and a half. And with Makita's twin pack 36 volt line, not allowing for extra length of the 21700 cell packs when sitting side by side, it's likely going to stay that way with not seeing any larger cells in 18650. While DeWalt and Milwaukee are out here saying, what if we could make a more powerful battery to upgrade the tools people have already bought? Makita's saying, what if we change really nothing about the batteries we already make, except maybe sometimes how they're wired together inside, and make everyone buy all new toolkits so that they can have a little bit more power. We're not knocking the potential advantages for higher voltage tools, but if Milwaukee can make a one inch D handle impact wrench 18 volt without Makita really having an answer for it, it doesn't seem like voltage was really the limitation if Makita really was in a mood for making new tools. That said, we desperately want to get our hands on the new XGT three quarter inch from Makita. That would be the first new high torque from the big three since really Bieber had a bowl cut. Let's jump into some testing though. Up first we have the Makita XWT17Z mid torque, which currently tops our mid torque ranking chart due to the sheer amount of beans it's able to deliver from its definitely not on a diet body. Here's its best run. And here's that Makita with a 4 amp hour pack, also new, also cycled a handful of times before testing. Ouch, so the phenomenon we saw with the DeWalt XR might not be isolated. That's a 16% loss from 502 down to 420. 
Let's see how the 2 amp hour pack fares, which has an entire row less of cells. Three hundred and twenty nine foot pounds. That's a whole twenty two percent down from the four amp hour, and that's thirty four to thirty five percent down from the five amp hour pack. I think that's pretty enormous. We were not expecting to see that really. It puts this otherwise top ranking mid torque closest in our testing to the heart mid torque from Walmart. And with how bad that thing smells when using it, that's not really close company you want to keep. One thing we sort of can't shake is how similar Makita's battery prices are to other top brands. Yet even the real deal batteries sort of look like knockoffs. Most brands use glass fiber filled nylon plastic in their cases and Milwaukee uses this rubber over molding to boot. While Makita's still rocking some shiny ABS plastic looking stuff and their battery release buttons are white. A white plastic that can't be clean too really. We're not tool tidy snobs, but looking grimy after two uses is sort of unique to Makita in our experience. And these battery level gauges, which are only on some of their batteries, are rather new introduction compared to other cordless tool brands. Back to the testing though, we swear we don't hate Makita. Here's the high torque run with a 5 amp hour battery pack. Six eighty nine is a good run, enough to be our second most powerful cordless so far. Now let's see if the four amp hour pack is able to keep up with that current draw. So definitely not enough to set any class records, and it is down in power, but 10% this time instead of 22%. Remember that each of these are run three times and you're shown the median on screen. Let's check out that two amp hour pack now. Here's its run. That's 512 or 177 foot pounds down, which is 26%. Not like the 35% of the mid torque, admittedly, in its loss, but if you look at the numbers, both tools lost 173 and 177 foot pounds, respectively, using the smallest battery pack. We know that really should have no basis on anything, that may be just a coincidence, but it's interesting to see. Perhaps the mid torque being a 2021 tool with a more modern brushless motor means it can draw more amps for its size, enough to approach that of this high torque. Either way, what the dyno has shown us today is that even with complex powertrain tools like these impact wrenches where the power you're delivering is not directly coupled with the electric motor like it would be in a drill, it's interacting with a secondary impact mechanism. Even within this category, battery size and capacity can and does often translate into power, or in this case, torque. And as we've shown, in a big, noticeable, doesn't need a dyno like ours way to figure it out. There's a ceiling to this, of course, as we saw with the M18 Gen 2, and even the M18 High Torque with a 21700 cell HD 12.0 battery. Eventually the motor is accepting as many amps as it will ever need, and it isn't going to take on more just because the battery can supply it. But it's good news to discover that the ceiling to that is not some 2 amp hour or 4 amp hour pack, as we've shown today, and those improvements can be seen on impacts of smaller sizes than high torques. Strapping on even a simple run of the mill 5 amp hour pack, as long as it's a real one, in our experience, may allow you to finish that wheel bearing job when a smaller battery couldn't. 
which maybe you already knew, but dino graphs don't hurt to prove to your friends either. If you like videos like this or tool head to heads, which is our bread and butter, consider liking and subscribing. And thanks as always for watching.